I remember that feeling of utter hopelessness, that feeling that I had reached the bottom of this hole I had dug myself into, and there was no way I was ever going to get out. I didn't ever think that my life would lead into such darkness. I was somebody who had a future. Um, I had hopes and dreams. Uh, you know, I had so much opportunity on the horizon, and yet there I was alone, uh, addicted to heroin, and there was no end in sight. I don't live that way anymore. I've found a way to live my life without drugs or alcohol for an extended period of time now, and that hope and that joy has come right back into my life. But unfortunately, not everybody is as lucky as I was. This past year, I lost four very close friends to fatal drug overdoses. People who weren't able to find the help that they need so that they too can find that light once again. After my friend Greg died, I began to look at the addiction problem across America, and what I found was absolutely crazy. I had no idea that over 135,000 people died just this past year from drug and alcohol-related deaths. That's over 350 people per day. That's not just my problem, it's an epidemic. What's even crazier is that only one out of every 10 people who seek help are able to find their way into treatment of some sort, much of it inadequate. And it became really clear to me very quickly that this is America's most urgent health crisis. I got angry, but I wanted to figure out a way to turn that anger into action and get as many people as possible talking about this quiet epidemic. And on May 1st, I was elected delegate to the Democratic National Convention with the support and help from my community and over 70 young people in recovery who are also sick and tired of sitting on the sidelines as their friends are dying. I want to make sure that the voices of those still suffering and those in recovery are heard loud and clear in Philadelphia at the convention next month. I'll be leaving Los Angeles on July 8th to drive across the country with my brother in recovery stopping as we cross 12 state lines to talk to people still in the firm grip of addiction, people who have found long-term recovery, and along the way, meet some extraordinary souls who are making amazing impacts in their communities. It's time to put faces to these numbers and finally get these stories heard. Come with me as we begin facing addiction across America.